We're now going to see some examples of synovial joints. So those movable joints in your body. Um, some of these we're going to go into more detail in lab, and you're going to see the bone markings, muscles, ligaments, and how those allow for movement at that joint. Um, so today is going to be an overview of um, six, I think, um, joints, some of which won't make as much sense right now because it will be the first time you've seen some of the bone markings, but you're gonna see a whole lot more in lab. So this is one way to first introduce you to those bone markings um, and to some specific examples of joints and how they, how they work. Okay, so first example is the temporomandibular joint. The TMJ is the abbreviation for this. This is in the jaw. This is the joint that allows you to eat. So this joint um, is actually a gliding or planar joint, All right, It's the same thing. And it also is a hinge. So we're already getting at right, joints that are not as simple as we said they were. This one is able to kind of do, do both things. And both of those movements are important for eating. The hinge part is important for, um, so when you eat, there's elevation and depression of the lower bone. This is your mandible. Actually, I will um, label that here. So elevation and depression, right? You know, that means up and down. And then we also have retraction and protraction that actually is, is the gliding part, gliding like this. Um, and that actually occurs when you chew as well to a lesser amount. And you may have heard of this joint, a lot of people have pain in it because of teeth grinding and there's certain parts of it that can knock against and grind each other. Um, and it's kind of because it's such a complex joint with how it, when you chew, it needs to both depress and protract. So it's going both down and interior when you, um, when you chew. And this articular disc, that's this, is help is actually kind of um, gliding, but that can be misaligned and and cause pain. So here's our articular disc. Remember the meniscus of the knee is another example of articular disc. Okay, um, here is our articular capsule, right? So this is a synovial joint. It has articular capsule that has a synovial membrane as part of it with synovial fluid. So this joint actually has a superior and an inferior cavity to it. So this is the joint cavity and the inferior that are separated by the articular disc. This here is actually um, part of the mandible and it's the, not spelled right, mandibular, a name for where something articulates with another thing, another bone, condyle. And here there is a long, wide depression um, on the mandible which is the mandibular fossa. Okay, um, there are of course ligaments, um, they're external ligaments that support this joint that are not drawn in here. So I'm not gonna go over the ligaments for, for this joint, um, but they, they do exist. I think there's three or four of them. And then of course muscles are what is going to cause the action um, of this depression and protraction and then elevation and retraction. And you'll see those muscles of mastication, um, mastication's chewing, you'll see those in, in lab. Okay, the next joint is the ankle joint. And specifically, this is called the talocural joint um, because we're talking about the articulation between the um, curl region. This is the tibia and the little bone here is the fibula. So on this case here, here's the tibia 
is the, the lateral view and the fibula is the little one. It's on the lateral side. This is the curl region. So the joint is named for where the curl region meets the talus, which is um, the bone underneath here. So that's the main joint of the ankle. It is a hinge joint. So it's uniaxial. And your foot can move other directions too, besides just that, which is called dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. But those are due to other joints. You can see all kinds of other articulations here. I'll come back to that in a moment. So for the talocural joint itself, um, this is here, the deltoid ligament on the medial side. On the, there's usually ligaments on both sides of, of joints, or, um, support both sides. On this lateral side, there are, um, there's posterior and anterior and inferior. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm gonna call, him, call them the tibiofibular ligaments. Ligaments are often named for the two things they connect. So the tibia is attaching to the fibula with these ligaments. That's why they're called that. These, this ligament here is connecting the talus, which I will name the talus here and here. This is the talus, which is a bone, talopheral ligament. So this ligament here is the talofibular ligament. We have got also a calcaneofibular ligament. So um, the calcaneus bone with the fibula. And then this is a, this right here is the, actually I'm gonna do this in a different color. This is the subtalar joint. So we're outside of the talocural joint. Everything I've drawn here is related to that dorsi and planar flexion, dorsi flexion, planar flexion. This and this is a different articulation. This is called the subtalar joint. It is a different articulation. It is underneath the talus. It's right here, in fact. Um, so it's in between the talus and um, calcaneus. There are other articulations in here as well, right? So it's the movement between at this subtalar joint, along with some other motions in these um, intertarsal, intertarsal joints in the tarsals, those enable eversion and inversion of the foot. So it's a good example of the foot itself can move in more than one plane and way, but this joint itself is only responsible for, for one of those. Of course, those ligaments are providing stability in regardless of, of the movement. They're probably more important during certain movements. Okay, let's go on to elbow. We're getting now adding in some of the anatomy um, we've seen with snowfield joints, some with like the fat pads, stuff like that I'm going to add in here. Um, so some basic stuff and actually, you know, if you want to pause the video and label as much stuff as you can yourself based on what is pointed to here. Articular capsule. That inner part there is going to be the synovial membrane. And then we've got inside there, the cavity. This that surrounds the trochlea. So this right here is the trochlea of the humerus. And we've learned that this anatomy already actually in lab, most of the other bone anatomy will be new. Um, for us. Um, so articular cartilage is covering that trochlea. 
where the articulation is. We've got, if I just jump down to the ulna. So here is the articular cartilage of the ulna and specifically of what structure? Of the trochlear notch, right? Of the ulna. Um, this thing right here is the coronoid process of the ulna. This is the ulna. And then, right, this is the humerus. We've got some structures that are other structures of joints. We've already labeled some, the articular capsule. This here is a bursa. So these two things are both bursa. Um, this one is probably a um, submuscular bursa because underneath or um, subtendon, uh, actually. It's preventing friction there. This one is a bursa as well, and it's specifically called the olecranon bursa because it's on the olecranon. So you actually have a little bursa right there. You've got a tendon here. Might as well label that tendon of the, of the tricep muscle. Um, the tricep and back, we'll learn that too. And a fat pad. And another tendon here. This is the tendon of the biceps brachii, brachialis muscles are in the arm. Okay, that's everything there. Um, and then a different view shows you the ligaments. So the ligaments are often um, kind of cover up a lot of this. So the view of them is going to be separate. Um, this is here, the articular capsule. Olecranon process, humerus. Um, lateral epicondyle, actually I'll label that one because we didn't on the other one. And you know that term. And this is the lateral view. So it's gonna be the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Then just do some of those. We've got the ligaments. So that's what I want to focus on here. The annular ligament is this one that it kind of does this um, curve shape like like an annual, like annual means some sort of like cycle, circle. Um, so this is the annular, however, it only has one N. Uh, this here is the radius bone, right? Then we've got one more ligament on this view. So from the lateral side, this is called the radial collateral ligament. And On the other side, from the medial view, we are going to have the ulnar collateral ligament. And I cannot spell that one right. Ulnar collateral ligament. Um, this is the ulna. This is the radius. So the ulnar collateral ligament is the one attaching to the ulna. The radial collateral ligament is this one, um, which is attaching to the radius along that part at least. But I would remember the medial view is going to have the ulnar collateral ligament. Then articular capsule is this. Kind of hard to see that that's not a ligament, but it is it's a fibrous capsule, right? So it, that's why it looks like that. And this is then going to be our annular ligament. You can see it kind of going around again. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, what my labels, this is the ulna. So is this, this is specifically the coracoid process. I'm sorry, coronoid process. Okay, this is then a hinge joint. Um, primarily humeral ulna is what we're talking about. So where the humerus and ulna meet, um, there is a humeral radial joint as well that acts with that. Um, we're gonna talk about them kind of together because it's, it's that hinge movement. The movement of supination and pronation is a different joint that's outside of 
of what we're talking about here. Okay. Let's do me. Next. Okay, so the knee, I'm going to pause to label all the various structures that I have before. So like all those fat pads, um, you can pause as well and label them for yourself as practice. Okay, I've labeled the basic just bones and articular capsule on this one where it is. I'm gonna go through um, with the, the specifics for the like tendons. Actually, I could have labeled this as a bursa. It's called a, a sub suprapatellar bursa because it's above the bursa. This one is another bursa. There are, oh my gosh, I can't see what this is pointing. This is the fat pad. It's actually called the infrapatellar fat pad. We have an infrapatellar bursa as well, meaning um, like just underneath. And I guess I also should have labeled before this synovial cavity is kind of that space right there. So I'm gonna switch colors again to be able to label the kind of new structures. These are, these are all new, you don't know them yet, but the structures that are actually the ligaments that I want to focus on for here. Um, there are two ligaments inside here. One is going from kind of posterior to anterior. So this one here is the anterior cruciate ligament. Do be able to write that down. Cruciate ligament. Um, the other one then that goes this way, this is the PCL, posterior cruciate ligament. There is one more ligament in this view, I believe. This one right here, our patellar ligament, the one that is sometimes called the patellar tendon. This is the patellar tendon up here. Um, that comes from the, the quadricep. We also see it called the quadricep tendon. Okay. Um, then I think the only other things in this picture here are these two, the, the, menis, the menisci, the meniscuses. There's a lateral meniscus and um, the other lateral meniscus. Let's actually go to this picture where we can see those menisci again. Here is the lateral meniscus. It's on a lateral side. If this is anterior, this is lateral. And on this side, um, this is our medial meniscus. So there is a medial meniscus. You can't see it from this lateral view here. Then we've got these other two um, ligaments I already talked about. This one is more anterior. This is our ACL and this is our PCL. So these two other components that are labeled are um, the articular cartilage on top of the condyles. Right, there's a, there's a medial and a lateral condyle. That's what those are. Um, I'm gonna actually label PCL like this. That's going this way. It kind of goes posterior. Then lastly, what color was I using? Red. Um, down here, we have external ligaments as well. So the ACL and PCL are both inside the joint capsule. Um, the ones out here, so I want to label this one. This is our fibular collateral ligament. It's also called the lateral collateral ligament. So LCL, you'll see. This one on here, what do you think it is? The tibial collateral ligament. This is the tibia, that's fibula ligament. This is also the MCL, medial collateral ligament. Um, that is all I want you to know for those.